La di da 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 la di da di da di dum. Hello there. I get really excited about this ramen. Flavor is queen. Ramen is a legitimate food. I know. It's hard to believe. Ramen noodles. Ramen. You can watch this channel in secret. I certainly won't tell. This is Plant Based Fooding for Yummies, a cooking channel dedicated to making vegan cooking or plant-based cooking accessible to the regular person. Um, we're not going to use any super weird ingredients. There's a couple you might not already have, but once you have them, they stop being weird, right? Let's get started. So when I say ramen noodles, what do you think? <laughs> I'll give you time. think of it as dorm food because I went to undergraduate school and ate a lot of ramen. <laughs> Came in lots of different uh, different forms. You can get them in that little styrofoam cup. You can get them in the little sachets. Sachets? Packets? Satchels? Not sure. Um, but you can actually buy ramen noodles either like the grocery store near us, which is only I realize on the East Coast, but of the United States, <laughs> um, sells them in little packets. They're like wheat, they call them wheat ramen noodles, and they're they're straight and they're thin, um, and they cook really, really quickly. That's not what I consider ramen. I consider ramen the funny, like curly, yellowish noodles that cook for three minutes in a pot of water with a flavor packet. That's what I think. They look kind of like in 1980s or 1990s, you know, perm you know, in, in a blondie. You might have ramen left over, because I think the shelf life is like 300 years or something. So you might have leftover ramen from the days of yore. You might have, you might buy ramen regularly because you still like it and you still eat it. Or like we did, we had a bunch of ramen left over because our daughter got braces and things were a little sore for a minute. So that was something she could make herself that she wanted to eat. Um, but after a couple packets, you know, she was like, oh, I can eat regular food now. That's cool. And then there they sat. There they sat. But there's also ways to make these gluten-free. There are gluten-free ramens, which I will link below for reference. So check those out if you do need a gluten-free option. Um, and then all the other ingredients are gluten-free already. So let's not waste any time. Let's hop to it. I like to pre-chop my vegetables. Kind of like they do in the cooking shows where they're like, this only takes 20 minutes. It only takes 20 minutes because they haven't included any of the time it takes to chop the vegetables. Um, there aren't a ton of things to chop for this, but I do like to top my ramen with any kind of fun veggies I have in the house because I often don't even serve this with a salad or anything because we just like the noodles so much. So I like to uh, add a little veggies on top. So. You know, sprouts are good, but um, like roast uh, red peppers are good, or roasted red peppers. I don't know why I started saying that. Raw, raw red veg, red vegetables. Wow, wow, raw red vegetables. You figure that out. All right, so you're gonna start with the garlic and the ginger. Um, I like to put in five to six cloves. Um, by all means, use fresh garlic. I just don't have a garlic press, and I'm pretty much over peeling and chopping garlic unless it's a special occasion. And garlic is kind of always welcome in my house and in my tummy. And then I use ginger paste. Ginger paste is uh, an alternative to fresh ginger. And I find ginger to be, while delightful, really difficult to sort of peel and chop. It's kind of stringy. Um, and like I said, it's delightful. I really like it. And I love the smell of it. And then you can take the peels and you can boil them. It makes your house smell good. And you can make tea and all these things. But those are things that I do in another life, not in this one. So if you're like me, go with the, the squeezed ginger. Uh, it works great. So that you just sort of stir around in the pan for, I don't know, a minute or two. You know, you'll start to smell it will be good. Next, you add a little curry powder. My family doesn't like too much heat. In fact, they like zero heat. So the curry powder is, is a nice curry flavor without adding any heat. Let it sort of do its thing for another minute or so. And then 
at this point you would put in three cups it calls for four three cups of vegetable broth with a can of full fat coconut milk if you're going light and you're not gonna you don't you just can't manage doing the full fat then that's fine you're gonna have a thinner broth uh, in the end uh, but I think other, otherwise it would work just fine I don't I don't actually think it would be a huge problem the fourth cup of vegetable broth you would mix with peanut butter um, and then incorporate that in the next step because the peanut butter is a super weird consistency compared to everything else so you certainly don't have to separate it out and sort of manage that separately but you can because it will be easier to incorporate later uh, and then simmer after you've added the peanut butter and the broth mixture uh, you're going to simmer for a few minutes and then you add the rest of the stuff maple syrup doesn't work very well surprisingly i just don't think the maple syrup makes a difference and for how expensive maple syrup is i say don't even bother uh if you don't have agave syrup i think brown sugar works like a dream a lot of people don't just have limes lying around i do happen to have one lime and one lemon today but feel free to use you know the lemon juice in a little container or the lemon juice in the little plastic lemon here's a trick take the lemon or the lime and roll it with your hand on the counter and it really works it sort of smushes everything up and gets the juices flowing so you cut it and it's already like juicy juicy everywhere and then you squeeze it into the thing that you're making and it's super easy because i don't have a juicer either <laughs> i seem to not have any equipment in my kitchen yet i don't have any counter space or cabinet space for additional equipment so once everything is added you literally just let it simmer on you know medium low for ever for however long you want because in my opinion when it says simmer then all of a sudden you've got all the time in the world so i never you know just sit there and look at the clock when something says simmer i'm like oh this is an opportunity to do the dishes <laughs> i love doing the dishes when a recipe says simmer the noodles only take three minutes to cook I'm sure if you've made this as a child or if you made this last week, you know that they can go from, you know, perfect to soggy in about three seconds. So now again, you might like your noodles soggy. And honestly, if you eat, if you have any leftover and eat them the next day, they're going to be a little softer and they're just fine. <laughs> I've even eaten them cold because I'm crazy, but these take no time at all. So I never tell my family that dinner is ready until I'm like, about to put in these noodles because everyone's got to mess around right they're like oh just a minute or i'm gonna go to the bathroom or blah 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 give it a try though it is well worth it and i think you'll be pleasantly surprised it's so easy and it comes together so quickly that you'll be surprised and it's like a you know essentially it's a sophisticated ramen so you know noodles are always kind of a fun comfort food right hey if you found any value in this video or any of the other videos hit the old like button and uh, make sure to subscribe hit the little bell if you want to so your phone tells you when i've dropped a new vid and um in all seriousness folks we are living in some crazy times and it's important that we all realize and all remember cooking and food is the universal language and it's always filled with love, whether you're reheating leftovers, whether you're making something for the first time, whether you're making your great-great-grandmother's favorite recipe. Uh, do it with love, do it with gratitude, and remember that it doesn't have to be Instagrammable, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and you deserve a little joy. But be kind to yourself, be kind to others. I'll see you next time. La di da 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 di da